Hello, I'm Tom W8JI, and this is a video about the first test that you should do before you're tuning any amplifier, or I guess periodically while you're using the amplifier, to be sure that the grid current meter is still working properly. So we'll get into this uh, video here. Okay, the radio is on CW, there's no key in the key jack. So there's no RF from the radio, um, and I'm going to manually key the radio and watch the plate current and the grid current meters. You'll see that in a properly working amplifier with a good meter protection diode that the plate current meter moves. See the plate current meter is moving, and the grid current meter is not moving at all. It is stable when I key and unkey the amplifier. Now this is an amplifier that has a shorted meter protection diode. It's the same situation. I have the radio in a CW mode with no key plugged in. So there's no RF output from the radio when I activate it manually. And I'm going to key and unkey the amplifier over and over again and watch the grid and the plate current meters. This is with no RF excitation into the amplifier. There's keyed, there's unkeyed, there's keyed, there's unkeyed. And you notice that the grid current moves with the plate current meter. They move together about the same amount of deflection. This indicates a bad meter protection diode. So you shouldn't go any further with using the amplifier until you uh, repair or replace that diode. Now in the uh, 811 amplifier series, although this board varies a little bit, uh, the diode is always located uh, between the tank coil, uh, between the uh, 10, 15, and 20 meter tank coil, and the uh, rectifier diodes. So it's a little diode you see there labeled D16 and you can replace that with a 1N4007, a 1N5408, or a 1N uh, anything that is bigger than 1 amp and more than like 100 volts. The voltage isn't critical at all. As a matter of fact, the higher the current on this diode, the better the diode is. It doesn't have a lot of voltage across it, but it has a lot of current if there's a fault in the amplifier. If there's no fault, there's no current at all on the diode. Now if you have a um, AL82, AL1200, or an AL1500, uh, that's called the AL12 frame amplifier because they're all the same frame. Uh, the, the diode is located on a stock filter capacitor board. The diode's at the outside edge of the board, shown here where the little arrows are pointed. We have a replacement board uh, uh, for this uh, filter capacitor board and a replacement rectifier board that's a better filter capacitor and it's a better rectifier board. As a matter of fact, it's better than anything else out on the market because uh, we pay attention to the trace spacings and the ratings of components, so we sell a pretty tough board to replace the original board. All right, here's the uh, third uh, frame of amplifier that uses this uh, diode. It's used in the uh, AL80As, um, and uh, it was added in some of the AL80s, uh, but that's way back in the 1980s. Um, but anyway, in the um, later frame, the AL8X uh, is what I call it. It includes the AL80B, the AL800, the AL800H, and the AL572. Uh, they're all in the same frame. This diode is D17, shown here in this picture. And uh, on the schematic, it's D117, just to confuse you. But uh, uh, this diode, again, can be any diode that's one ampere or more. Um, it should be a silicone diode, not a, uh, uh, not a shot key. You don't want to use a low threshold diode here. And the voltage across the diode is very low, so it doesn't matter what voltage you use. 
and then when there's a uh, fault, uh, like you have a gassy tube or some kind of uh, arc from the high voltage at the tube side of the power supply to, to chassis, uh, this diode provides a return path back to the negative end of the power supply. That keeps the negative rail of the power supply in all these amplifiers from elevating to a real high voltage. And if it does that, that's what blows the meters out. So this negative rail clamp is also a meter protection diode. And the only tricky thing in the AL80, uh, AL8X frames uh, is they have an automatic bias. So what you'll want to do with the automatic bias circuit is intentionally mistune the amplifier. Put the plate control way out of where you know it's going to be resonant at. Um, and then you'll drive the amplifier uh, with the band switch in the right position. You'll drive the amplifier with only a few watts of power, maybe one, two, three watts. Don't go any more than that. Just tickle it with a little bit of power. Won't hurt the amplifier at all to do this. And what you'll do then is it'll automatically turn on the bias circuit so you'll have plate current. And, and uh, then if you see that the plate current and the grid current both come up at that same rate in, uh, in this frame of amplifier, then you know you have a bad D17 diode and you need to replace that before you use the amplifier. All kinds of bad things can happen if you try to tune the amplifier up and that diode is bad in any of these amplifiers. So thanks for uh, watching this video and I hope this helps people get a uh, longer, happier life out of their amplifiers.